Okay guys, here we go. So what we've got here is this 2000 American Standard Strat and I actually had it painted silver sparkle. You might be able to just see. Um, got an aged pit guard on it. Got Texas Specials in there at the moment. But the, the bridge one, there's your classic stagger. So the B is lower. I wanted more of a, a, a stagger that followed the kind of, you know, the action or whatever. So I popped a slug from the G or one of the one of the longer slug pole pieces and I put it in uh, this text special and it was cool so this is going to be the guitar that will uh, get the um, the treatment of the JB Junior we got a trusty box of stuff here there's the JB Junior it's going to go back in there's a uh, an FS1 uh, I have got two FS1 so maybe one is already in the guitar so uh, we'll have to find out where the other one is here we go great fun so um, yeah as you can see I've got the HSH uh, routing. Um, we've got the delta tone pot on the bridge um, tone control. So the delta tone is where when you get from 9 to 10 there's a little click and what that does is it takes the it takes the tracer circuit the actual thing that, that you turn places a load. So you know how a pot places a load on you know your sort of signal that comes out of the output jack everything here places a load on it if you were wired directly from the pickup to the output jack it would sound different to how it does with with the switch and everything on there it would be a bit brighter so delta tone is meant so that when you get to 10 the pot itself is not in the circuit anymore um so this is it's a pure sound so yeah standard switching um but what i was going to say so um this was this is quite an interesting guitar it started out i bought it new um, 2000 and it's it was a black and white with a maple neck American Standard Strat the thing with it reason um, I kind of was able to afford it was because number one the guitar shop where I used to go was amazing um, and he would let you take stuff and pay for it you know as you as you went but he let you take it he was amazing but the other reason it had um, where is it now oh yeah here um, yeah, it kind of had something bizarre going on with the lacquer, but it was literally just a... And you can see the, the skunk stripe thing, the lacquer had come away. But it's been like that ever since new. Oh, and down here, big bit of lacquer missing. Um, and I literally didn't care about that, you know, because it was a good guitar. Um, and, you know, it stayed pretty much like that. Now, the other fun thing about this guitar, and what I bought it for, this was my um, about my third incarnation of a Arm the Homeless Tom Morello kind of replica and as I said in uh, earlier in this video I've I've had this painted Silver Sparkle. Why Silver Sparkle? Well because the paint guy had some Silver Sparkle. You may have seen in my other videos my Red Sparkle Strat here which has got quite a you know quite a nice flake on it. I actually I actually kind of ordered this paint myself and then I said oh we must do another one to the painter and he said, oh, I've got some sparkle. So this is how we've ended up with silver, because we didn't want two red ones. Although, to be honest, I wish I did now. I'd quite like the telly to be red as well. Need to do a video on the telly. Anyway, this was my arm the homeless, which meant it was um, featuring the, uh, the EMGs a la Morello. So we've got, um, you know, my version, my take on it was an 89 and an, an old 81. So look at the toggle switch here. So right, this was the guitar that this was fitted to. So that was black on black. Yeah, it, it looked okay. You can't really see it, but I actually drilled. This is filler here. Um, you can just see, because obviously this is covered by the scratch plate, but you can just about see. Do you see there? There you go. Right, right there. Um, you know, where the filler... It's not quite, because it didn't need to be perfect there. I drilled it with, um, you know, one of those huge flat drill bits that you use for drilling locks in doors. <laughs> I literally drilled into this guitar when it was... You now I did some gigs with it quite a lot as standard, and then, you know, I decided to modify it into the Rage one. Because um, I, decided, you know, I thought American Standard Strats was, it was a good starting point. And anyway, that was that. Anyway, so fast forward to now. Here, so here we are. As we saw, we've got the uh, here we've got the Texas Specials and the Alnico 2 Pro. Um, frets are all good on this. Um, this sort of uh, damage here was where I had to sort of I had to kind of crudely route out, but uh, AKA chisel out 
the back of here because with this scratch plate um, the the EMGs didn't fit you know once it once you've drilled this hole and you've drilled this hole you were sort of committed to this then so when it came to fitting the EMGs in in the recess there you know because this is like WD here they go it's a WD so it's just slight differences this is the kind of fun you get into with the pickups and the cavities um, this one's got the swimming pool route, by the way, and there's absolutely no issue with that red one with sustain. It's it sings brilliantly. So does so does this one. So let's go ahead and wire up the pick guard. So uh, as I said, we've got Alnico 2 Pro. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take the funky Texas Special that I've got here in the bridge. I'm going to put that in the middle, and then we're going to have JB and FS1 here. So I'm just going to go ahead and cut these out because I haven't even heated the soldering iron up yet. Um, cut them off of the switch so that we can just get going. Okay, so there we go. And also the... Oh, why is this one wired? Oh, that's because that's the middle, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, the other thing to bear in mind is uh, the, the colouring system that um, Dimasio and Seymour Duncan use is different... So Damasio, the the color like so a black and white wire, right? With uh, if if it was a Seymour Duncan, you'd normally put black to ground and white to the switch. As much as I can remember, Damasio the other way round, which you can imagine, is it is it Larry, <laughs> Larry Damasio? You can imagine him just going, hey, we'll just take it, make it the other way round. Or Seymour Duncan, whoever came first. I have no idea, but you know, you can you can imagine them just going. Let's just do the opposite to the other guy. Um, the screwdriver I'm using is too small for these screws. I also support the world of my world of rock and roll with car fixing, which is why there's car stuff all over here. So I've obviously got a fully equipped workshop next door, but I'm choosing not to use it. Okay, so I have no idea what you can see here. So we've got um, we've got this funky bridge position uh, Texas special. So lower the the E pole piece. That obviously has the effect when you raise the pickup up, has the effect of putting the A, D, and the G closer. You know because obviously if the E is higher, that limits how high ultimately the pickup can be adjusted. So by lowering the E, you get to actually raise the others. <laughs> and obviously the E has always got enough gain because the string's so fat. And then there's the B, which um, which I which I, I guess I must have put in from another pickup. Um, and as you can see, that's flush on the base, the B, yet it's... Look at that, it must be a G because it's about as high as the G. So that's cool. Now let's move on to the rest of the scratch play, what we've got left. Um... I can see here, um, this part, you, you won't be able to read it, but it says 250k A. So this is an audio 250k pot. And for this whole thing to work, we need a 500. Now, because, because the guitar from the original Strat, uh, good, best Strat bridge pickup video, I've sold that guitar now. Um, so I would have put the scratch plate, the standard one, back on. Um, and But the, I believe, what did I have? Oh yeah, I had a three-ply white on there, I think. Anyway, the actual 500k pot that I was using for that volume is not currently mounted in a strap. So I'm going to the box here. And I'm using an, an, a Gibson humbucker here to keep track of my screws. Kind of cool. If you remember from my my video of the Gibson Vegas, the Gibson had a 300k audio linear taper pot as standard. So you fit an audio taper pot, and then the the rate that you turn the knob down compared to what you actually hear happening um, will then sort of marry up a lot more and make more sense. Anyway, getting back to what we're doing here, this is uh, a spare 500k audio taper pot that I bought when I did the modification to the Gibson Vegas, which is a video that you can find of mine by looking for on my channel. Um, another thing that I did to the Vegas was to fit the Seymour Duncan 
um, antiquity bridge humbucker. In fact, the um, Gibson standard Gibson uh, burst bucker from the Vegas is right here. So let's get the FS1. So that's got a nice long cord. So should, should we leave it with the white or shall we have it? I think that kind of lets you know that something's going on, doesn't it? In the neck. If you've got the white pickup covers, it lets you know something's going on <laughs> in the neck. All right, let's uh, get the two small screwdriver. Uh, this is the JB Junior from the best strap bridge pickup ever video. Um, this JB Junior isn't really that old. I bought it in 2013 or 2012. Um, but I, I made, I was really, really chuffed with um, a good job of relicking it. Um, you can just see if I, I'm trying to look through the thing. Um, it kind of still says, can I focus if I press no? Um, it kind of still says Seymour Duncan, but I managed to age the top of it really, really successfully with, I think, it was uh, some sort of coffee I used. I'd read somewhere, and I think a bit of um, uh, steel wool or maybe wet and dry sandpaper. And it just kind of made it just look, you know, a bit older. So I'm going to shove that in the bridge. It should go in this pickup scratch plate. This is another fun thing is whether it actually, you know, do mini humbuckers actually fit in the hole. Um, you never think they will, but they do. Well, sometimes they don't. This almost feels like it's going to be one of those times when they don't fit. Right, so JB, JB Junior. Doesn't, uh, yeah, the height of it. I've had experiences with um, other amps when I've had that JB Junior installed. And I think this is what prompted me to fit it with a 500k pot, is I had it installed on a Strat, and I literally just kept the 250k standard pot and put the JB Junior in just like as you would do. And it just did not stand out above this the single coils. It was like you'd go to the, 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 the humbucker and it would go down in level. It's like, what the hell? Um, and do you know what really improved that was setting the stagger of the pole pieces. I just do them in a curve, uh, you know, like you would do to follow the the saddles or whatever. Um, and that really seemed, sort of seemed to help it. But once I ran it with a 500k pot, I, I didn't ever have that problem again. It really let it breathe. Um, so there we go. So that's the the kind of basic that's just the pickups mounted obviously got to wire them in um so there's there's some sort of soldering -y type stuff i want to go to change the pot over so i'll come back with that stage done here we go look i've just made one additional little tweak look at that i've put a seymour duncan cover on a texas special how funny is that that's going to drive me mad <laughs> Okay, so I've got the old pot removed from the pick guard, and someone was asking me what the value of the cap was in the best strap bridge pickup ever video. The higher the value of the pot, so 500k is going to go into the scratch plate, there it is. The higher the value of the pot, the lower the capacitor value. Uh, needs to be in order to sort of uh, do a treble bleed, so to speak. And just incidentally, these three pickups are the ones from the best strap bridge pickup ever video. It was that JB, it was my funky Texas Special with the raised 
extra long pole piece as the middle. That was it. And it was this uh, FS1 because the, the whole um, angle on that video was originally that they are all bridge pickups. When I put that pick guard together, I thought, ah, I'll just use all bridge pickups and let's just see what happens. And it just turned out to sound excellent. Now, you might be saying in the comments, if it sounded so good, why have we just seen you retrieve the so-called best strap bridge pickup ever from a box of bits? If it was so good, why wasn't it continually mounted? Well, the answer is I didn't want to go into an up and running strat just to put that pickup back into it. As much as this might contradict what you appear to sort of see of my kind of behavior, I like to keep guitars to be like, okay, so that strat's got that pickup in it. That one's got a humbucker in it. Like this one here's got the humbucker right now. It's just that with this one that we're modifying right now, well, this silver strat is the project strat. It's the one to be sort of messed about with. I thought I'd keep it Morello. Um, and I could do it. It's only filler that's in this that down here. I could easily drill it out again and uh, go back to humbuckers. We are now basically rebuilding the same pit guard um, as the best Strat bridge pickup ever. So there we go. So we've got our 500k ready to go in. It's going to go in there. And then we need to do some soldering. Okay, here we are. We're all wired up. Um, uh, I have no idea if it's going to work. This is literally the first time it's been uh, it's been done. Um, nice and neat around there on the thingy, Bob. Um, we're all in, and so we're going to see if it works.